Hi guys, I don't know which was worse for Rishi Sunak. The fact that he stood in the rain delivering what sounded like a resignation speech, or that Labour's 1997 theme song, Things Can Only Get Better, was being pumped out with loudspeakers by our friend Steve Bray. It said you don't get a second chance to make a first impression, but for some reason Rishi Sunak and his team thought that they would try, and even that failed. He hosted a sort of rally-slash-press conference a few hours later inside Out of the Rain, but only pro-Tory media outlets were invited. Sky News obviously isn't pro-Tory. Have a look at what happened to one of their senior reporters. He was at the Exile Centre for us, uh, waiting for Hello, the first I'm campaign event. I'm at a Conservative Party launch. This is where the Prime Minister is going to speak in the next few minutes. And I'm being forcibly removed. Uh, we just simply wanted to have access tonight at Sky News. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we're told that because there are pool arrangements in place, uh, we're not allowed uh, to be here. This is, by the way, what we're trying to film is the campaign event where the Prime Minister is due to speak in the next couple of minutes. It's in front of Conservative activists. It's essentially... Uh, trying to get across the message that we had in Downing Street today from the Prime Minister talking about uh, stability. Um, I'm sure he's going to talk about the decision he's made. Um, but as you can see, we just don't have access to it. It's not entirely clear why we don't have access uh, to it. Uh, but as I say, this was meant to be the campaign launch for the Prime Minister, for the Conservative leader, in front of party activists, in front of those loyalists. <laughs> You're asking, why do you not have access to this? I think it's quite clear. Rishi Sunak is afraid. He's afraid of scrutiny. He's afraid of being asked questions that he doesn't have the answer to. This is what it's about. The, the people who were invited the, from the media were pro-Tory, as far as I can see. So this is what it's about. It's about, we've had an absolute disaster. You're going to ask me questions about that disaster of a press conference earlier on. And that's too embarrassing for me. I want to move on from that. So what we're going to do is invite journalists who are not going to ask questions about that and who are asking questions about how, well, we're going to stop the boats and how it would be a disaster if Keir Starmer became prime minister. Those are the types of questions that Rishi Sunak once asked, curated, controlled, not to embarrass him. You know, he's embarrassed himself with the speech in, in front of number 10, so he wants to undo, try to undo that damage, and it would be just an, um, more embarrassment layered upon embarrassment if a, a real journalist came up and asked a real question. So that had to be avoided. So the journalist had to be removed. Now, this is extremely embarrassing, I think. It, very bad optics. Kicking journalists out of a press conference or a, a rally, it's, it's a bit like what Donald Trump does. It shows that you're not in control. It shows that you're afraid of scrutiny. You're afraid of difficult questions. Now, I think this is probably just for today. This is just for the announcement. Probably he, he will have to ask, uh, he will have to face questioning from real journalists in the future, but he probably didn't want more rain on his parade. Uh, <laughs> he had enough today. So I, I think he wanted this to be swept under the carpet, move on from it, do the press conference inside, away from the rain, surrounded by people who are going to ask me very softball questions and not more embarrassing ones. Now, there was also another embarrassing situation um, following his speech. There was talk of Conservative MPs putting in letters to the 1922 committee to have him removed and undo the call for a, a general election. Now, I don't think that's actually going to happen because it would require a new prime minister who would have to go to the king and ask for parliament not to be dissolved or the opposite of dissolved <laughs> to undo that in some way. But I don't see that happening. I think this is a bit of um, a, a backlash from Tory MPs who were a bit surprised, to put it mildly, with this news that there was going to be a general election because many of them are not prepared. They were hoping that the election would be in the autumn where they could prepare uh, for that, get their organization within their constituencies ready, get their volunteers ready, prepare all of that. Now they have six weeks and that's not going to be enough for a lot of them. And it's going to result in uh, a lot of uh, Tory MPs not being prepared for the general election. And if they're not prepared, there's going to be more difficult for them to hold on to their seats.
Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.